Okay, uh, this will probably be the last video that we have time for this week. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is, um, I want to talk about tangent vectors and normal vectors. So in particular, we'll try to, you know, the idea here is that we, we've got this surface, right? And, and at any point on our surface, say this, this point here, we might like to construct, let's say, tangent plane to our surface at that point. And we know that to get a, to get a tangent plane to a surface, I mean, we've, we've been through this for first for graphs and then for level surfaces, that all you really need is a point on the surface and you need a normal vector. Once you have those ingredients, you're good to go. Uh, we also know that one of the ways you can come up with a normal vector, if you don't already have one, is to find yourself a couple of tangent vectors. And, and there are some natural candidates for your tangent vectors, right? You have this, this sort of mesh of curves on your surface that comes from the, the horizontal grid, this Cartesian grid over here, right? the rectangular grid. So you have these curves going through that point, and so you have the tangents to those curves. Maybe they look something like that, right? And, and so what you kind of get is at every point on your surface, um, you get this nice kind of three-dimensional coordinate system, right? Two tangent vectors and a normal vector. Uh, in fact, you can think of these two tangent vectors as kind of being sort of artifacts of the coordinate system that you have over here, right? Really what you're trying to do is, is construct a coordinate system on your, your surface. That's one way uh, to think about it. Okay, um, so how do we get those tangent vectors? Uh, there's a couple of ways to think about it, right? Um, so how do we get those tangents? Well, you know, we have these two curves, right? So we have curves through, so there are two curves that we have through a point, let's call it, say, R of u naught and v naught. There's, um, let's say, I don't know, let's call it, um, we'll use gamma, gamma 1 of, of u, which is R of u and v naught gamma 2 of v, which is r of u naught and v, right? So you hold one of the two variables constant and you vary the other one, right? So the, the first curve is, is what I get if I hold v naught constant and I vary u. So it's, it's this curve here like this, right? The other one, I hold u constant and I vary v, so it's this curve, right? Um, so those two lines, one horizontal, one vertical, they produce these two lines on our surface. Okay. The other thing I'll notice is that, well, the tangent vector, so gamma 1 prime, hold V constant, take the derivative with respect to U. That's simply the partial derivative of R with respect to U. Right? And then I evaluate at the point U naught. Um, the other tangent vector, well, same idea. It's the partial derivative with respect to v at u naught, v naught. Okay. Um, but th it, this is sort of a story that we've seen before, uh, which is that you know if you if you zoom in on that one point, right? So you're at this single point. You're at this point, okay, and you've got this little patch of your surface, right? This little patch of your surface. And that little patch of your surface, it came, it came from a little rectangle over here, right? And, and over here, the two sides of your rectangle, right? You have delta u times i, you have delta v times j, right? Those two vectors make up this side. And we know that if we wanted to do the area, right, um, the area is going to be the determinant. If you put those two vectors in, well, the first one is just delta u and then 0, 0 delta v. We know what the area is, right? We don't need a determinant to tell me that. 
But when we get the corresponding tangent vectors over here, right? So we have that one and that one. They span a parallelogram, right? And that parallelogram is pretty close in area to the original patch. Um, so we can say that the, the area is approximately, ah, well now we run into a small problem, right? Um, we run into a little problem because these are vectors in R3. I can't put two three-dimensional vectors into a determinant, right? It's not a square matrix. So I have to think, what's another way that I can compute that area? Ah, I remember that another way I could compute this area is, is this is the same thing as if I took u times i cross product delta v times j, right? Take the cross product, take the magnitude. And it's going to be the same thing over here. The area is going to be approximately the magnitude of this r u at u naught v naught crossed with r sub v u naught v naught. Okay. Okay. Good. So now there's a couple of there's a couple of things that happen here. There's a couple of nice things that happen. One is we, we've got our tangent plane. We might not have pointed this out, but we have our tangent plane because these two vectors here, right, these are our tangent vectors, okay? And that means that we also know what a normal vector is. So the normal vector with respect to this particular choice of parameterization the normal vector, well, if we've got two vectors that are tangent, cross product gives me, gives me the normal vector, right? So the normal vector is simply the cross product of these two at any point, right? So you take the partial with respect to u, the partial with respect to v, take the cross product, you get your result. Um, so that means that what we're really doing here is we're computing the magnitude of the normal vector. Okay? Good. All right. Um, so one of the other conditions that you might impose on your surface, um, we've got a couple of minutes, I think, for this video, um, is in addition to this being C1 and 1 to 1, and another thing that you might ask for if you want to guarantee your surface is smooth is you might ask for a non-vanishing normal vector, the same way that you ask for a non-vanishing tangent vector on a curve. Um, and this takes care of things. It turns out that actually um, there, there's one other problem that you run into um, with surfaces that you don't run into with curves. Um, Every curve can be oriented, right? You just choose a direction of travel. So you can choose an orientation for every curve. Um, and so you can, you can insist, if you have a smooth curve, you can insist on having this non-vanishing tangent vector. Um, not every surface can be oriented, okay? This is kind of a tricky thing. Um, so the standard example of a surface that can't be oriented is the, is the Mobius strip. Um, We'll, we'll talk about this in class, right? So, or, you know, there's, there's zillions of things online about the Mobius strip. So, so we, and maybe we'll even build some, who knows? Um, so the Mobius strip is, is, is a two-dimensional surface that has only one side. And you can, with a bit of work, you can convince yourself that it has only one side. Um, so, so you can't, you know, so with a normal vector, right, when you're orienting your surface, so an orientation is just deciding, okay, at any point on the surface, is my, is my normal vector pointing, let's say, up, or is it pointing down? Um, you know, and, and so basically the orientation is making sense of, of what, what is up, what is down, right? Um, that's one way to think about it, is you can actually make sense of that, right? Or you can think about pointing in, pointing out, if you have something like a sphere. Um, so so there, are, there are surfaces where it is impossible to choose a consistent orientation over the entire surface. It's impossible to say everywhere on the surface with this parameterization, this normal vector will always be pointing, let's say, up. Um, 
So this, this can cause problems. It is a challenge. Fortunately, most of the examples we're going to work with are orientable surfaces, um, so we can choose the direction, right? So we can choose this non-vanishing normal vector, okay? So then, so then when we have that. So by computing derivatives of the parametrization, the two partial derivatives, the u and v partial derivatives, we get our tangent vectors. Cross product gives the normal vector. Magnitude of the normal vector tells me the approximate area of one little patch on the surface. So then the other thing that you might conclude is that if I wanted to know the area for my surface, the area of, of my surface, let's say, call this thing S, S for surface, um, well, I have to add up all the little patches. How do I add up all the little patches? Well, I integrate, right? So I integrate the magnitude of the normal vector. Right? And notice that I'm doing that integral not over the surface, I'm doing the integral over here, right? It's the integral over D, right? It's just a standard area integral, right? But the way that we'll often write this is we'll say it's the integral over S of, we'll call this DS, is this air, uh, surface area element, okay? Um, so from here, you can, you can move on to integrating, say, scalar fields. You can put a function in there, just like we did for line integrals. And, and then you move on to vector fields. Um, so where we want to go from here, um, next week's going to be the last set of videos. We're going to do a few examples, probably, where we compute some surface area. And then we're going to talk about how do we actually integrate vector fields. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, then we have two big theorems, and we're done.